Hello, uh, I am uh, Rui Cardoso, Senior Lecturer for Aerospace Engineering. So uh, this face you are seeing there is my face <laughs> and I'm going to um, um, introduce you to statics. So I'm going to, to show you some sample lectures and tutorials on uh, statics. So if you want for some reason to email me uh, with any query, you have my email address here. And uh, you also have these uh, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, things for Brunel, which you can try to follow. Um, so what I'm going to cover in these uh, sample lectures and tutorials is basically material for uh, your year one at Brunel. So I'm going to cover statics only. Of course, you are going to do many other things, but the main main topics I would like you to to focus is basically the, the first three vector analysis I'm going to give a very quick review of vector analysis with the basics and then I'm going to move to equilibrium of a particle where a lot of vector analysis is required and then I will introduce moment produced by a force vector so these are quite basic and but extremely important concepts that you need to know very well for uh, the remaining of your lectures. Uh, then I will move to uh, the equilibrium, uh, sorry, equivalent system force moment, where you will learn how to basically build an equivalent system that is uh, in the same equilibrium conditions as the original system. That will be very important for the topic that follows, which is equilibrium of rigid bodies, uh, which is the main, uh, the main uh, topic in statics. We, we, will study, okay, we will study many different types of supports. The, the bodies or the, the, the rigid bodies, they need to have supports. They cannot be levitating in the air. Uh, and then we are going to learn how to replace those supports with uh, forces, which are called reactions. And we are going to learn how to derive the equilibrium equations. Uh, basically, these equilibrium equations will, will um, make sure that your body is in, is in equilibrium. And then from those equilibrium equations, you can calculate many different unknowns. Uh, then we will talk a little bit about beams. Uh, we will derive the transverse shear force and bending moment diagrams for beams. So this is a kind of a introductory, uh, introductory uh, video I will have for all these sample lectures. Of course, uh, different lectures will have this same introductory video, but they will refer to different topics on this table of contents, if you want. Uh, another thing you can, if you are more curious, I, I, I have a YouTube channel which you can, if you are interested of course and curious, you can try to see what I had there. So I have a, a lot of lectures in that YouTube channel so you can search for that channel by googling, googling Ricardozo YouTube. Uh, I have lectures for more advanced years uh, so I recommend at this point you not to see those lectures. But um, uh, I also have some supporting material for uh, statics in year one there in YouTube channel. So I think it's a, it's a nice thing for you to, to see as well. I would like also to say that all the examples I will be doing in these lectures and tutorials, uh, not all of them, but uh, many of them were taken from these recommended books I have listed here in this slide. So engineering mechanics statics from Ebler or from vector mechanics for engineers statics from Beer and Johnson uh, from engineering mechanics statics from Marion Bolton and Craig and also from my own book stress analysis for lightweight structures a MATLAB oriented approach so all the examples you will see in the videos sometimes I refer which book I've taken the example sometimes I don't but these are the books that we uh, the, uh, sorry that I, I I follow so in case I forget to mention which book I took the example you have here the list of books uh, so you you know where they came from
All right, thank you. So we will move now uh, to the specific lecture. So this is the first tutorial session you have. Um, and the idea of this example is to calculate the equivalent force and moment at point A. So you have, basically you have three forces there at different points. This is a problem in three dimensions. Uh, I want you to build an equivalent system where you have only the resultant of the forces at point A and also the total moment produced by those three forces about point A. So you need to start with the resultant of the forces. <clears throat> Basically, the resultant of the forces uh, is a summation of all the forces you have don't forget the summation of force vectors. We are working with vectors. In this case, uh, of course, this, this i is from 1 to n, where n in our example is equal to 3. You agree? We have three forces, so we have to do this summation from 1 to 3 of force at 1 and 2 and 3 and then we just add these three factors these three force factors and we have the resultant right? so the idea here is for you to practice a little bit how you can define these force vectors we are going to use two different ways for example for the force vector Let's say this, this force vector here, this one first, 700 newtons, this force. How can I define this, this force vector? So 700 newtons is the, the norm or the intensity of the force, but I also need the direction, right? When we work with vectors, we need to have the direction. So this 700 newtons, the only thing that it, it gives me is the intensity or the norm. So I can say, I can say, for example, I can, I can call this, this force vector FBE. And I can say that this vector is going to be the product of its norm or intensity, which is, in this case, 700 newtons, times, I will say, a unit vector I'm going to call it lambda BE. So this lambda BE, the norm of this lambda BE needs to be equal to one. <coughs> needs to be a unit vector because if this norm is not equal to <coughs> one, look at this, if this norm is not equal to one, what is going to happen is I'm going to be multiplying a vector which norm is not one by 700 so at the end the intensity of my force is not going to be 700. It's going to be 700 times something, which is the norm of lambda b. So I need to make sure that lambda b, that vector, is a unit vector. So that when I multiply that by 700, I get a total length of my vector of 700 newton. Right? That's why it needs to be norm equal to 1. This is one way of, of describing the force vector FBE. Other possible way is 
if you know the angles, for example, if you know, let's say, imagine that you know this angle between the force vector and the y-axis. And imagine that you also know the angle between the force vector and the x-axis. If you know these two angles, <coughs> you can then decompose this vector. You just multiply by the cosine and sine of these angles. Then you get the components in the x, y, and z direction, right? You can also do that way. But the problem with this particular force, FBE, is that you don't know these angles. You can calculate if you want, but you don't know. For the other two forces, you know the angles, right? Look at this force. You know it, it does 45 degrees with the x-axis and 45 degrees with the z-axis. That other force here, this one here, it makes 60 degrees with the x-axis and 30 degrees with the y-axis and 90 degrees with the z-axis. So we know the angles of these <coughs> two forces, so we can define these two vectors in a different way. But for this one, for FBE, for this force, we are going to use this, this method of defining the vector, which is basically, <coughs> basically we have two informations. This, this term here includes the intensity while this term here, because the norm is equal to 1, this term here, lambda BE, includes, the information it includes is the direction of the force. When you multiply these two, you get the combined, uh, you get the total information for the vector, including the intensity and the direction of the vector. So. The only thing we have to do is just to define this lambda be, this unit vector. And how can we define a unit vector? This lambda be, you have any suggestion of how can I define? So what I'm, what I'm going to be looking for now is how to obtain this lambda be. Any ideas? Position vector, which position vector? O to B, or B to E. Yeah, you need, exactly, you need to define this position vector from point B to point E. Let's call it BE. And then you can say that your unit vector, so this BE, the norm of this B is not equal to one, right? It's much more than one, you agree with me? So how can I make the norm of this B equal to one? Well, if I just divide my vector BE by its norm, then at the end, I will get what? I will get a unit vector because I'm dividing a vector by its own norm. It's like dividing 200 by 200. The result is 1, right? You agree with me? But so at the end, I will get norm of lambda B equal to 1 if I do this. And I also get the direction because the direction of lambda BE is going to be the same as the direction of BE, right? With the only difference is on the norm, lambda BE will be norm 1, and the vector BE, the norm, is bigger than 1, is not 1, but they will have the same direction, right? So what, what we have to do is we just have to define our vector BE, I'm going to, I need some space. Maybe I can delete this, let's see. And then I can say, let's work the vector BE. How can I? define this vector B that I have there in red, and maybe I can use the red color, let me see. How can I define this vector B? Look at the screen there. 
vector B is the position vector connecting point B to point E, how can I obtain the x, y, and z components of this, of this vector? Sorry? Can you, can you say it again, please? E minus B. Yes, very good. I know the coordinates of point E. They are given. I know the coordinates of point B. If I subtract the coordinates of these two points, I get my vector BE. So point E, what, what, are, what is the x coordinate? Is this one, 150, you agree with me? Isn't it? What is the y component of point E, the coordinate? Minus 50, right? Z component, 100. <coughs> now I need to subtract the components of vector, oh, sorry, of point B. X component of point B, you tell me. 100 is this that one here, right? Is it 100? Yes. Are you sure? 75. 75, very good. <coughs> Very good, it's 75, right? What about the y component in the y direction? Point B. 100, this one, agree? Z. 50, very good. This one is my z component, right? Z coordinate of point B. So my vector B, I just need to subtract. So 150 minus 75 is 75. Minus 50 minus 100 is minus 150. 100 minus 50 is 50. Is this correct? What do you think? Is this correct or not? OK. So we have, we have this, this term here, which is the vector B. I need to divide now this by the norm of this vector. So I need to calculate the norm now. How do I calculate the norm of a vector? I want to calculate now the norm of my vector BE. That is equal to what? Square root. Square root of what? X squared. Very good. Plus y square plus z square, right? Here, I, I, our uh, y component is minus 150, but when you square, it becomes positive, right? So it, that's why it doesn't matter. How much is this, please? 175. 175. So what we can do now is I can finally obtain my unit vector lambda BE. So let's look at the X component of lambda BE. It's going to be equal to the X component of my BE, which is 75, dividing by the norm, which is the norm of BE, which is 175. You all agree? This is the X component. What about the Y component? Minus 150. Dividing by 175. What about the Z component? 50. Dividing by 175. Okay. You can maybe, we can maybe simplify this a bit more. How much is this? 3 over 7? Is it? So this one is minus 6 over 7, right? And now this is 3 times smaller, so it is 2 over 7. So hopefully, this lambda b is a unit vector that will give me the direction of my force, my 700 newtons force. So we can, we can always confirm 
If this is a unit vector, I can calculate the norm You can, you can, if you want, you can always confirm, you can say the norm of lambda B is going to be equal to the square root of 3 over 7 square plus 6 over 7 square plus 2 over 7 square. This should be equal to 1 over square, uh, sorry, 1 over 7 times... So we have here 9 plus 36, 45, 49, 49, square root of 49 is 7, 7 over 7 is equal to 1, right? Right, you see? So the norm of this lambda b, of this vector lambda b is equal to 1, and now I can use this lambda b, this vector, we calculate it. I can now just replace this vector here and then I will have my force FBE completely defined. So let's do that. I'm going to delete this. I need some space. Delete this. And now FBE is going to be equal to 700 times the x component, 3 over 7, is going to be 300, you're right. y component, again, 700 times the y component of my lambda b, which is minus 6 over 7. And my z component, 700 times z, this z component of my lambda b e which is 2 over 7 I think we can simplify this even a bit more so this is going to be 300 here uh, minus 600 200 is correct this is my force vector that is applied at point B Uh, I did this example in the morning with the other group and I video record so I'm video recording this one as well so I will upload both in in Panopto maybe tomorrow so then you can because I said some things in the morning I'm saying different things eventually in the afternoon I want to give you as much information as I can then it's up to you to manage all of that data in your advantage, right? And study. Uh, all right. So we have one force defined, FBE. So basically, we we obtain this force vector. This one here is this FBE. This one, right? But we need two more force vectors we need to define. So we need to define, let's continue now. Let's define this one. Let's define the force vector at point C. So I'm going to find some space. Let me delete this guy. <coughs> And let's work now, let's call this force FC. FC. And we are going to obtain this force now in a different way. Because for this force of 1000 Newton at point C, we know the angle that it makes with the x-axis and the angle it makes with the z-axis. Also with the y-axis, which is 90 degrees. And then we can obtain this force directly. For example, x component of FC, you tell me, how much do you think it is? x component of FC. 1000 cosine 45 degrees. You all agree with this? Yes, very good. Now, y component? Zero. 
Everybody understand why is zero? Yeah. It's perpendicular to y, right? So the angle is 90 degrees, cosine of 90 is zero. So y component is zero. Z component. Very good. Minus 1,000 cos 45 again. That's it. That, this one was much easier, right? Much quicker. Because we know the angles it makes with coordinate axis, so it's, it's easier. You can at home, if you want, for this, for this force, you can try to get the angles with the coordinate axis. And then at the end, of course, you need to arrive to this same result, 300 minus 600, 2,000. It's a good way to study. It's a very good way to study. <coughs> so this force is defined. Now we need to define our last force, which is this one here. We also know the angles of this force vector with the coordinate axis, so we can also do Let's call this force FD. FD. You tell me X component. 1200 times what? Times what? Cos 60. Y component. Component in the Y direction. Cos 30, very good. And now the component in the Z direction. The angle with Z is 90 degrees. Zero. Zero. Good. That's good. So the only thing we have now to do is our resultant R. I just need to add FBE, this force here. This one, I'm just going to copy. Plus, I need to add now my FC, which is this force here, so I can also copy. Copy, paste. So this is my FC. So I, I can put like this, so then it's easier for you. This is FBE. This is FC. And now I need to add FD. This is my FD. FD. And then I just need to add all these three vectors, component by component, starting with the x direction. So you will have here 300 plus 1,000 cosine of 45 is 707.1, seven more or less. 1200 cosine of 60 is 600, right? Cosine of 60 is equal to the sine of 30, which is 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 times, times 1200 is 600. So x components is this. Y components, we have minus 600. Plus 1200 cosine of 30, can you please tell me how much that is? Sorry? Zero. It's not zero. 1039.23. Point two is okay. Very good. And now the Z component, we have 200. Minus 1000 cosine 45, so minus 707.1 plus zero
So we can. I will continue here. I don't have space there. So resultant is going to be. So 300 plus 600 is 900. So 16. Very good. Y component is going to be. 439.2 is correct? No, the other one is minus 507. Is this correct or not? Yes. Good. So resultant of the forces, that's it. That is only half. So we calculated, so equivalent system resultant we did the resultant of the forces now we need to calculate the moment produced by all of these forces about point a and i'm going to use so maybe i'm going to copy this figure let's see copy maybe use a clean paste it here again Let's work the moments now about point A. Uh, I'm just going to copy as well the, the final result we obtained for the resultant. This one. Copy. Leave it here. And let's work the moments now about point A. Moment produced. So let's start with force FBE. So I want to calculate now the moment produced by this force FB of 700 Newton. We know this force vector already. So I want to calculate the moment produced by this force about point A. In order to do that, so we are going to calculate the moments about point A and we are going to use this definition position vector cross product with force vector for all these three forces, okay? We are going to use this, this method. So I'm going to start with my force FBE. I need to define this position vector. So this position vector, this R that you have here, needs to start where? I want to calculate the moments about point A. So this position vector needs to start where? Point A. A, yes. It needs to start at point A, and it needs to go all the way until point B. So I need to define, this is going to be my position vector R, A, B. And this is going to be the position vector I'm going to use here. And we are going to define this position vector now. We are going to define it here. X component of R, A, B. This vector that you have here in the figure in red, 75. Y component is zero, good. Z component, 50. Everybody understand why this is position vector, R, A, B? So I can put it like this. This is our R, A, B. Any questions? No? So I need to do the cross product with my force vector. And the force vector we have here is this FB, this guy. So I'm just going to copy. And I'm going to paste, paste it here. Okay, it's too big. So I'm going to, to include it again a little bit smaller. So 300 minus 600, 200. Okay, this is my FBE. We can say this is, oops, this is my FBE. E.
And then if I do now the cross, this cross product, I will obtain automatically the moment at point A produced by my force FBE. But I have more forces, right? So I need to add, I need to add more moments about point A. So now we need, we are going to look at the moment produced by this force at point C. Moment produced by that force about point A. Uh, and then I will have to, I have to define my position vector. You tell me. My position vector for the moment produced by this force needs to start where? Point A and needs to go to C. So it needs to be, it's always a good idea to draw the position vectors in your, in your exam or in the exercise you are doing, okay? Because, why? Because you, ne you need, after that, you need to obtain the components of this vector, right? In the x, y, and z direction. If you don't have the vector there, how can you get the components? It's difficult, right? So that vector, and now we are just going to write the components of that vector, starting with the x component. How much is it? 75. Y component? Z component? Minus 50. Very good. Everybody understand? And now cross product with the force FC, which is here. I'm just going to paste here, and then we can just use the we can just use the cross product with so the x component is seven hundred and seven point one. Y component is zero, Z component is minus 707.1, okay? All right? This is my FC. So if you want, we can say that this is my position vector RAC. And this is my force vector FC. Okay? And then the moment produced by that force about point A is the result of that cross product. I just need now to go to the final, the moment produced by the force at point D, at D. So what is the, so I need to add, I need to add now, Position vector, which one? Starting from where? A to D. This RAD in red here. X component. Are you sure? 100, right? Careful. Is this 100? Is the X component, right? From point A to point D. You agree? So here we have 100 now. Y component? Minus? How much? 100. Z component? Zero. Very good. Cross product with force at point D, which is 600, 1039.20. We obtained before, we obtained before. So this is my R A D, oops. <coughs> and this is my force at point D. Very good. We just need now to do this cross product, so let's do it. Uh, I'm going to continue here, M A. 
the first cross product, this one, the result is going to be a vector. The result of a cross product is a vector. X component, this times this, which is zero, minus this times this, so the result is 30,000. Now, the Y component, we get this times this, minus this one times this. How much is that? <coughs> so we have here 15, 15,000 minus, minus 15,000, right? So it's zero, isn't it? The, is zero or not? Is it right? Now the Z component is this times this, which is zero, minus this times this, which is going to be 30,000 again. Wow. Anyway. Right? Now we need to do the other two, yes? No, no, top two. Top two. The first one, X component. Okay, the X component. Let's, let's review the X component again. Oh. oh, this one here. <coughs> this. No, 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 on the first one. For the Z, don't you cancel out the Z and then back the top two one? It's 45,000. Yeah, minus Oh, you're right. Sorry. You see, full morning with lectures, uh, my brain is starting to slow down a little bit, so I'm sorry for that. So, I, I did wrong, right, Z? You're right. So, let's, let's, let's delete this. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a moment. Let's delete this. It's getting a bit confusing. And let's do this. Z component, okay? So we need to add this one, and then we need to do this cross product, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't do this before. No. Oh, sorry. All right, so 75 times 600, uh, how much is it? Sorry? 45,000, oh, okay. Negative, right? It's correct now, agree? Thank you. Sometimes I do this, I want to see if you are paying attention. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It was my mistake. All right, so we need to continue. This, we have to do now this cross product here, this cross product here, okay? Let's do this. X component, very quickly, look. This times this time, minus this times this is zero. Agree with me? <laughs> y component, Y component we have Minus 50 times 707.1, minus 75 times minus 707.1. How much is that? Fifty-three thousand. Someone else confirm this number, please. And thirty-two point five. That is the Z. Yeah. No, no, five G O G two point five. Oh. <laughs> five three zero oh, three two point five. Yes. Is this? Minus. Yeah. It's minus. Is minus? No, nope. needs to be plus. Because what you do in the y direction is minus fifty times seven hundred and seven point one. Minus 75 times minus. So this part, which is bigger, is going to be a plus. So, sorry? So this number is not correct. Okay, so you tell me now. 17? Seventy-eight is fine. Is this? 
<laughs> All right, so wait. <laughs> okay, I'm going to make a pause in the video. So seventy thousand six hundred and seventy-eight is the correct one. Z component. How much is it? Zero. Very good. Everybody understand why zero? And now the last one is this cross product here is the last one we have to do. Uh, the good news is that, oops, this is a plus. So we need to add. The good news is that the X, if you look carefully, look at this. The X is zero minus zero is zero. The X component is zero. The Y component, Zero minus zero, again, is also zero. So only the Z component is not zero. And the Z component is going to be 100 times 1039.2. Minus with minus is plus 60,000. How much is this, please? Six five no. One six three nine two zero. Very good. 1639920, right? Is correct? Yeah, yeah. Very good. And then you just need now to add all these vectors together and then you get X component 30,000, Y component 17,678, Z component uh, 20, uh, you get 118, 117, it's 8. Is this? Zero. Very good. So this is our final result for the moment. And then, just to finalize, we can replace this initial system. I'm going to paste here again. So this is our initial system. And this is going to be our equivalent system. So what I'm going to say is that these two systems, they are going to be equivalent. But this one, I'm going to, we don't have these forces at these points. We only have our structure without the forces. And what we are going to have is we are going to have at point A, the resultant of our forces that we calculated. And we are going to have the moment at about point A. So this is my original system where you have uh, the forces applied at three different points. This is the original system. And this one here is the equivalent system where you have the resultant of the forces and the moment all applied at one single point of the structure, in this case, point A. <coughs> and these two systems, they are equivalent. Okay? Uh, and then, of course, we are going to work with this equivalent system, force moment, because then after this, we're going to say resultant equal to zero to be in equilibrium, and the moment at point A equal to zero to be in equilibrium, and then we solve the system of equations for the unknowns. All right? Okay? Any questions regarding this example? No questions? You look happier now. I don't know if it's because we reached the end of the lecture or because you are understanding, but I hope it's because you are understanding. Sorry?